Can you talk to me and explain why this works, what works, and how you develop your technology per airframe? Vortex generators are mounted at an angle into the relative wind. That means when the airflow hits the side of the blade, it hops over the blade to fill the low pressure area on the back side, and that's what generates a vortex. Spinning air stays attached to the wing at slower speeds and higher angles of attack, postponing that separation so you can have the result, which is the most important thing, improved control response at slow speeds, resulting in lower stall speeds, shorter takeoff, shorter landing. So that's what they're doing is they're spinning the airflow, making the airplane respond like it does when it's going faster, but it's going slower over the ground because you're speeding the air with a little tiny tornadoes. Now we've seen this technology implemented for a number of reasons. One is to make airplanes much better in the slow speed regime. Others are to, to improve the control of that airplane in various regimes and then especially in special capabilities like a twin. Talk a little bit about the modalities of how all this technology is being used in each of those regimes. Well, in a twin, VMC is a very important number to be able to know. And what we're doing by putting vortex generators forward of the rudder is being able to make the rudder work better. And VMC being an exercise in rudder and aileron, if you have your rudder and aileron working better, when you lose that engine, the tendency to become a frisbee is reduced because you have enough rudder and aileron to maintain directional control at a slower speed. And in many of the Cessna twins, we're able to have you stall straight ahead before the airplane will turn into the dead engine. So it virtually eliminates VMC because of it will stall straight ahead before you turn into the dead engine. We've had 79 calls saying thank you for saving my life, and a lot of them have been VMC situations. Talk about some of the characteristics you've noted about various airplanes and how VGs have changed the, char the, the character of the airplane, if not the utility of the airplane. Well, oftentimes what we're trying to do is take a really good airplane and just allow it to have more utility down at slower speeds so that you can have more avenues available to you and improve safety. Other times we have an airplane that perhaps might have a roll when it stalls that we're trying to fix something that was undesirable. Or it might be that you have an airplane that um, has uh, very little rudder authority and great ailerons, or the opposite. And so we're enhancing one area uh, more than the other to have better control harmony. We work with Piper Aircraft Company. They came to us and said, we have this great airplane, we need to have a weight increase, and we're limited by the 61 knot rule as to how much weight we can have. Can you get the stall speed down so that we can add weight and be able to still meet that 61 knot rule only at a higher weight? turned out that putting vortex generators on and removing some of the stall strips that they had on there for controllability, um, we were able to get um, the controllability with the vortex generators, which also allowed the lower stall speed. And uh, we're very proud to say that we have a good working relationship with Piper and send kits to them every month. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Rebuilding the sport aviation world one aviator at a time. That's ANN's new Aerosports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aerosport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aerosport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www. Aero-sport.net. What is involved in adapting an aircraft to take the most advantage of a vortex generator system? What we do is I'm studying the airplane to begin with. What is the airfoil? What are the speeds? What's the relationship of the wings to tail? Is it a T-tail? Is it conventional tail? Is it a stabilator or elevator, horizontal stabilizer? You know, what is the airplane doing? We have a pretty good idea of what we think it's going to do based upon those preliminary studies, but nothing replaces actually flying it. So we bring the airplane in, we put it in experimental category, load it to gross weight, forward CG, 
and fly it instrumented airplane without the VGs on to say what does this airplane do compared to book and is there anything about it we noticed any characteristic we want to work with and then after that then we start taping the VGs in place and our wind tunnel is going out and flying and doing stalls and then we come down untape the VGs because in flight tests they're on with carpet tape so we have the ability to untape them and move them and say okay we know that 20 degrees into the relative wind from some NASA wind tunnel tests in the 1950s is a pretty good place to start and what the spacing is the size and the shape of the vortex generators a lot of that is information that's publicly available what we don't know for certain is what is the distance after the leading edge that's going to be the optimum to reduce the stall speed and improve the characteristics of the airplane. We can't have it where the characteristics suddenly have that the, um, the stall is more abrupt and sudden and, uh, and a surprise. We still have to meet the regulations. So oftentimes I have people say, well, I put those VGs on, but if I do that, then all of a sudden when it quits, it's really going to quit. And that's not true because you have to be able to pass the regulations with the vortex generators on. Occasionally we'll have somebody say that they didn't recognize the fact that they were sinking at 500 feet a minute. The yoke held in their lap that they were in a stall because they could still steer. That's part of what it is that we're determining is just by trial and error where to put the vortex generators. What's an installation like this require in terms of cost, time, what does it take? Who gets to do it? What's the legalities like? It's an STC, and as an STC supplemental type certificate, you have to have an IA mechanic, typically the guy who does your annual, he has to sign to return the airplane to service. Now whether or not you do all of the gluing and he does the templates, or he does the templates and the gluing, it can be done in one day, typically 10 to 12 hours from start to finish and we have everything in the kit so you don't have to pay someone shop rates to be looking for a piece of string when we say lay a string line down. The kit itself for those airplanes is $1,450 and a day's labor, whether some of that is your labor and, and some it's theirs. To Joe 172, what's that do to his airplane? 8% reduction in stall speed is what we say. I have a 172 as my personal airplane. Before I had the Vortex generators on it, I flew it and I would do an approach at 60. Now with the VGs on, I typically make that approach at 55 if it's gusty and 52 if it's calm, and I have the same control response that I did at 60 before. So that's kind of how it translates into with more stability at slow speeds, and if I ever have to off airport, which I really hope I don't, at least not unexpectedly, that I can be as slow as possible and the difference between landing at 52 and 60 is big. Microaero.com is a great place to find lots of information about each individual airplane and what it does for that airplane. Annie, thanks so much.